What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're going to be covering several more topics in this video here today. Scream 6, we'll be covering that. Halloween ends, Nope, and Saw X. Some, some tidbits about Saw X and what you have to look forward to with that movie. So starting off with Scream 6, going back over some comments that Nev Campbell made when she was speaking with People Magazine about her departure. She also stated that she reached out to Courtney Cox and Melissa Barrera and the directors to tell them how sorry I was that I wasn't going to be there and that she loves them and she hopes that they have a good experience and they were very understanding she says she says very supportive and also sad she says now i will say this about that hopefully gail weathers will have a bigger role in this entry that just blows what she brought to the table in four and five out of the water because i want screen fans to be able to see that gail is very important to the story as well and i want people to just see uh that she can carry this movie without sydney she's i'm not saying gail is much more important to the narrative than Sydney has been, but Gail is an important final girl, a part of this puzzle as well. And Courtney Cox deserves our support as well. Uh, and it's clear going off of what we've seen from behind the scenes, she'll have minor beef with the Carpenters for whatever reason, but hopefully that ends in them taking down Ghostface together as a unit. And I just think Gail in a bigger role will be enough for those fans that come for the OGs, not all, but some to go out and say, you know what, I'll support it just for Gail. And we can explore character a bit more. Hopefully, Gail Weathers gets those first couple of phone calls that we've been dying to have her here with Ghostface. Give her some more clever, unique, uh, memorable chase scenes, something like that, that can just show people just how important Gail is to the narrative, just as Sydney is in her absence. And I wanna talk about Halloween ends now going into this next topic here. Uh, we're going to be speaking about what John Carpenter has had to say about the score. John Carpenter has stated that he's proud of Halloween Ends and the work that was done on the soundtrack. So this gives an indication that the soundtrack is ready and complete. He went back over older comments saying that it's different than the previous entries, which we can agree on due to the Corey Cunningham narrative. He also restated that if this next outing makes money, then Michael Myers will return and this won't be the last time or the end. He said that there's a way when a movie makes money, it basically resurrects the next next one i want to shout out to dark universe for discovering this latest interview with carpenter halloween ends has also been officially rated r for bloody horror violence and gore language throughout and some sexual references nothing any of us should be shocked at of course and just to speak to john carpenter's score carpenter's score in this trilogy has been one of the highlights so say what you will about the overall quality but carpenter's score never misses and only adds to the terror on screen no matter what you feel david gordon green has done with this new iteration of halloween carpenter's score has been a standout and i can't wait to hear those first few tracks from it and i also have another standalone video coming out today talking about laurie strode and michael myers because now we know that one of them will indeed die it was confirmed over on the halloween movies website so i can't wait to talk about that but i know that people just think that when it comes to this new timeline that david gordon green a lot of people think he's done a horrible job a lot of people think that 2018 was okay kills was a major step down and a lot of stuff that we're hearing about ends has some people like i don't want to see anything from this man touching halloween again i don't want to see any more comedians touching halloween and i get it halloween ends could end up still being something that's a, a cohesive and solid and effective end but if a lot of people myself included think that this is going to be a big disappointment in a lot of ways and a big departure from what we should have done uh because again jar carpenter reiterated this in a new latest interview and i'll leave a link to that in the description so i'm going to talk about jordan peele's nope pierce i want to shout out jordan peele because nope has officially passed 100 million dollars at the domestic box office which makes him three for three in that department as well the budget for the movie according to bloody disgusting was reportedly 68 million so that means the movie needs another 100 million or so before it is profitable once it releases outside the states i think it will achieve that easily uh nope was again another great another great film from the mind of jordan peele i do prefer his smaller scale original movie we got in 2017 get out of course and i like how he seems to be going bigger with each entry but i think the more he does that he'll eventually get to that first dud and although some people would say he's already had his first dud with us or his first dud with nope or his first dud was get out because not everyone was a fan of get out but i hope that he continues to thrive and shine in the horror genre and i'm glad this movie has made 100 million domestically and i can't wait to see what his next social commentary inspired 
inspired horror movie will be and what directions and what his imagination will allow him to do going into whatever it is that he does next i know some people still are coming out of nope like that was pointless there was no real message to it that they were able to understand again the movie's overall theme is about our obsession with spectacle and the links we will go to to achieve these spectacles and how far we will go to again gain attention from from views or gain attention not not views but profit off of something that will garner a lot of views like how they were obsessed with capturing that image of gene jackie which was the ufo creature uh it had a lot to say about hollywood and how crew members are not always acknowledged the way they should be a lot of cool things were in in that movie no but i'm shocked that it i'm not shocked but i'm glad it ended up on my favorite of the year list the last thing we need to talk about is Saw X. So Saw X we know is a future entry that is coming and is expected to have Tobin Bell back since the plan is for that to be a John Kramer centric film once again. And I've done a video in the past discussing a user over on the Saw subreddit Vink360 who people seem to go to for reliable info about the upcoming project. And I also mentioned how the movie is rumored to be taking place in between earlier Saw movies with John Kramer traveling to Europe potentially. Viewer or not, as you see here on your screen, recently tweeted that Saw X is looking to shoot within the next three months in Mexico. They also stated that they've heard a name of a director, but they didn't reveal, so they don't want to jinx it. Now, I will say the name that I've heard as for who will be potentially directing Saw X is Kevin Grudert. Kevin Grudert, I believe, is the one responsible for a lot of the editing in previous Saw movies, and he directed Saw 6 and Saw 3D. Some of the entries that I know people say are their, some of their favorites, I've seen people say that that's some of their favorites, that's not any of my favorites, but if he is the one that's actually directing Saw 6, not Saw 6, if he's the one actually directing Saw X, we'll eventually learn that sooner or later, and we'll see if they actually start filming out in Mexico within these next three months as viewer non has stated uh, and we'll probably of course learn more things along the way like who's in the cast and what the story will be overall because at this point again the rumor is it's going to be set in between earlier entries with John Kramer at the center and it's going to be exploring him traveling to Europe potentially or maybe even a different location if they're going to still shoot in Mexico. Maybe they won't be placed in Europe, but it might still have to do something with John Kramer traveling. I'm assuming it's related to the cancer that he has. But let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. There is a video in the description. I'll have links on social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies and reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in next video.